Hi, my name is Jonathan. This video that you're watching is going to be on how to repair a charging port on an HTC One M8. The particular model that we're using is a Sprint model, but it should be the same for any of the carrier models that you have as long as it is the M8. Charging port's a little bit different on this one compared to the M7. So, The tools that you're going to be needing for this, you're going to need some solder paste. This kind that we have is zero lead. It's from Zephyr, Zephyr Paste. I'll have a link in the description in case you need to purchase some from them. And the copper braid, you shouldn't need that in this particular video, not unless you have too much solder on the pins and you have to take some of it off. But as long as you don't put too much on there, you shouldn't need that. You're going to need some helping hands. Um, you can get these at just about any electronics shop. And these are going to be to use to hold the board of the phone. So obviously you don't burn your hands or anything like that. And most importantly, we're going to need the hot air rework station. The one that we use is Xtronic. Um, you can use any model pretty much as long as it gets up to the required temperature. And the temperature that we're going to be using on this particular repair is going to be about 320 to 330 degrees Celsius. You don't want to have it much hotter than that. Otherwise, you risk damaging the board as the board that the charging port sits on in this particular phone is very, very thin and it doesn't take a whole lot of heat to damage it. So as you can see from the pictures here, the charging port on this phone has got several connections on there where the pins on the charging port are disconnected from the pads on the board. And it's just a simple break in the solder. This phone had several pins that were like that, so more than likely it had gotten jerked or fell or something whenever it was connected to the charger. So fixing it is fairly simple since the pads themselves are not damaged or anything. All you have to do is heat the board up and melt the solder and usually... I usually put a little bit of extra solder on there just to make sure that it has a good connection. And then once it reconnects those pins to the, the pads on the board, then you're pretty much good to go. So. so at the beginning of the video here, we're just applying some Captain tape. This is just some heat resistant tape that will uh, protect those components. They're really not going to be damaged from the heat, but we wanted to make sure, since it was going to be an area of the board where we're heating, we want to make sure that those don't get shifted. And those are on the bottom of the board. And that's where we're heating this video. You can actually heat it from the top of the board because the charging port is completely encased in metal, so there's no plastic really exposed that you have to worry about melting. But for since we were recording from the top, we went ahead and heated it up from the bottom for this video. So right now we're heating it up and applying some solder paste to the board. I'm just applying a very small amount with this uh, charging port because we didn't want to have to take the charging board completely off. And there, the charging port pins don't really come out very much, so... If you have too much solder on there and you have to take some off, it's kind of difficult to get to it because the the pins really aren't coming out very far. It's really hard to get anything in there to, to mess with, and even getting the solder paste on there applied was a little bit of a challenge because you have all those components right behind it. So if you add just a small amount of solder paste, you shouldn't have to worry about any of the connections on the pins being bridged or anything like that. And if you do, you can use some of the copper braid to try to get that up, or you can always remove the charging board completely and remove the excess solder and then kind of start over again. So, And then once you get the solder paste on there, you're just going to continue heating from the bottom until it melts. And we uh, cleaned up a little bit of the excess solder on the back of the board right here because we got some on the uh, components on the back there, which isn't really going to damage anything because any of the excess solder you can just clean up afterwards as well once it melts. Uh, we just cleaned up a little bit there. And then you're basically just heating it up from the bottom until the uh, the solder on the pins there melts. And as you can see here, it did take a little while, but the solder is melting now. And you'll want to continue heating it up for just a couple of seconds after it initially melts, just to make sure that it's able to combine with the solder that was already there. And then you can remove the heat and just clean up the uh, remaining solder that might be on the board. There's a little bead of solder by one of those components there, so 
we'll clean that up with some uh, denatured alcohol just to make sure that all the remaining flux that was in the paste is off the board and everything. And and after that, you're pretty much good to go. So as you can tell here, um, the pins are connected good now. There's not any broken connections. And and I'll show you a a, a picture um, afterwards. So this is post repair. And then we've also got a couple of close up shots of the pins as well. So right here you can see those pins, um, those are the ones I believe on the left, and then right here are the ones on the right, and they're all connected just fine. So, And that's pretty much it for this repair, so it's not uh, terribly difficult. really only took about probably five minutes or so for the repair on this after you get everything disassembled. So not a terribly difficult repair, and hopefully this will help you fix your phone or, or somebody else's. So thanks for watching.